Well, good evening. Good evening. How is everybody tonight? Good. Good. I'm so glad to be here. My name is Rachel, and I'm just really glad to be here. And um, I just love the Lord so much, and He loves me. <laughs> it's hard to believe sometimes, you know, and I'll probably get emotional um, a little bit. I always do when I share my testimony because it's just so hard to believe <laughs> that Jesus loves me. <laughs> And that he saved me, you know, like that song really is my story. Like he saved me and that, um, you know, I'm captivated. I took one look at him and he captivated my attention. Like he, he got me and, um, I'll just go ahead and tell a little bit of my story. And then I have some, um, goodies to give away. Uh, but this is a picture of me just a few months ago. And this is one that was about, um, seven years ago. And that's my mugshot. I don't know if any of y'all have a mug shot, but I've got about eight of them. <laughs> um, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I was in um, just about every county jail that you can imagine um, within about a 60 mile radius around Birmingham. So if you know anything about Birmingham, I was in Shelby County, Coleman County, Walker County, Jefferson County, um, all the county jails pretty much. And now just surely by the grace of God, isn't grace such an amazing thing? It's way out of proportion, you know? <laughs> um, by the grace of God, I'm in back in some of these county jails that I was in, like incarcerated in. And I, I love going into the jail and sharing. Um, I was telling Mandy yesterday, we were, got to go sit on the beach for a minute. And I said, you know, 100% um, of my bad decisions got me here. And one preposterous gift of grace. <laughs> like, um, and I was telling the girls, I went to go speak at the Path of Grace this morning. And I was telling the girls there, I said, um, I did nothing right to get here. <laughs> like, I didn't do anything right to get here. I didn't. He did everything right. And I just rode on his, um, tra the train of his robe. He did everything right for me, and I jumped on the train of his robe, and I just rode that. It wasn't anything that I did, you know? Um, some people say that you give your life to the Lord. I feel like he gave me his. <laughs> like, the gospel is, um, it's always too good to be true. Like, what Jesus Christ really did for us is amazing. And um, so there's my, my mugshot. Um, seven years ago, I weighed 100 pounds. I was completely addicted to opiates, uh, Xanax, pot, alcohol, anything you can think of um, to numb the pain that I had in here. Um, like I said, I weighed 100 pounds, completely addicted, alcohol. My family knows, like they watched me go through it. And um, I was desperate. I, was, I had my eighth felony pending in Birmingham. I figured for sure I would go to prison on that one because I hadn't gone to prison on any of the other ones. You know, and I figured I was going to prison and I was really suicidal and I was gay too. I was living a homosexual lifestyle and I'd probably lived like that for 25 years of my life. And um, it was like, I was at bottom again. I don't know how many times I had hit bottom. You would think that when somebody goes to county jail and loses everything that they hit bottom and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just bounce right back out. You know, they, they get out and they just keep doing the same thing. And that was me. I was in and out of jail. And um, I contacted this Christian counselor in Birmingham. And I said, hey, um, I'm about to, like, I'm done. Like, and for me being done, I was thinking, how am I going to end this for myself? You know? And I don't know if you've been there before, but it's not a fun place to be, you know, the way that you can think about um, taking your own life or just getting, the only option to me at that point was to, <laughs> to, to get out, was to do something to myself, harmful and painful, to get out of the mess that I was in. I didn't, I believed in Jesus, but I didn't know that he actually had the power to get me out of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I called this guy, he's a counselor in Birmingham, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm done, man. I'm about to take my life. I'm, I'm just done with it all. And I have no hope. There's nothing left for me to try. I tried everything. I tried AA. I tried going to church. I tried getting a small group. I tried getting a counselor. Anything you can think of to try. I mean, I tried it. And it just, I, it didn't take for me. And um, he said, Rachel, I want you to come to Church of the Highlands. 
and I've got a woman coming in town to speak to the prison ministry team there. And I said, well, why would I go to church again? You know, I mean, I honestly thought, why in the world would I go to church again? And he said, I think you would really connect with her because um, she got delivered from a 26 year crack addiction. And I think you would relate to her. And so y'all somehow, Jesus, I went to church and I took my mom with me and it was a room a lot like this. It was a small little room. And this woman gets up and starts talking at a podium just like this. And she was like, um, I was a 26 year crackhead in Daytona Beach. I was a prostitute. She said at one point in my addiction, I didn't even know if I was a man or a woman. And she said, I am a 46 time felon. And she said, I was in solitary confinement and I was in solitary confinement. She said, I said, Jesus, if you're real, will you come and save me? And she said, the presence of God, Jesus walked in the cell and delivered her from every single addiction instantly. And I just remember thinking, there's no way, but it was undeniable. Like she was a living message and the glory of God was coming out. It was radiating off of her so much that it was undeniable that she had been touched by the Lord. And she said, I got instantly set free. And she said, um, she was supposed to serve, you know, a long time in prison. And she said, Lord, if you get me out of here, I'll spend the rest of my life serving you. Well, when she got out a year later, the Lord miraculously set her free, literally. And she got out and a year later, she started opening up homes for women just like me. And I didn't know it when I, when I went to go listen to her, I didn't know this. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just crying and I'm high. Like I couldn't go to church without getting high, you know, and I'm high, but I'm actually feeling something. I'm feeling something in here going on. And I remember I was um, probably sitting about, like right about back here. And she said, if God can do it for me, he can do it for you. And when she said that, I felt like this breath, like I, like I went like that and I breathed in life. And it was hope, it was life, it was, you're gonna make it. <laughs> it was love, um, I, I had instant hope. And so the next morning, I met her that night, and the next morning, I text the guy who had introduced or to asked me to come, and I said, I've gotta have what that lady's got, and I'll do anything, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And he said, Rachel, he said, I'm sitting across my dining room table with her right now, and she said, if you're serious, you can pack your bags. And she would love for you to be a daughter of her home. She has a home for women in Daytona Beach, Florida. And the name of the ministry was Radical Restoration Ministries. I packed my bags. I got in the car with her um, about two days later. I was high again when I got in the car with her. And it was a miracle that I was even in the car with her. You know, I really feel like the Lord... I was doing my best to say yes. You know, they always say, say yes to God, say yes to God. And I was just doing my best to say yes, but it was like he was saying yes for me. <laughs> he was saying yes for me. He was behind me saying, yes, you don't have to do this on your own. You're, you're going to make it. I've made a way for you, right? He's the way maker. <laughs> <laughs> and he made a way for me. And all I had to do was just take another step and just take another step. And so I got in the car with, her name's Dawn, and I got in the car with Dawn. This is literally almost seven years to the day. Like it happened March the 12th, 2016. Like I'm talking all, like almost seven years ago to the day. And on my seven year anniversary, I will be partying. Let me tell you, I'm on, throw a party. Um, I party every day anyway. But um, what happened was I got in the car with her and I was high. And she said, um, there's no smoking at my house. And I was like, well, I didn't know that I just smoked my last cigarette, but that's okay. <laughs> you know? And she was like, there's no cell phones in my house, so I'm gonna need your cell phone. And so I turned off my cell phone, gave it to her. And I said, I'm gonna be really sick. Um, I've been doing drugs for a long time. And if you've ever been addicted to opiates, you know the withdrawal process. And I thought, I'm in for it. You know, like I'm, I'm gonna pay for this. And um, she actually leaned over to me and she said, Rachel, she laid her hand on me and she said, you don't have to suffer anymore because Jesus Christ already suffered for you. And y'all, he did. He already suffered, he did it. He took it off of me. 
And I woke up the next day and we drove down to Daytona Beach and I woke up and I never had one single withdrawal. Wow. And I got set free. And then for, I lived with Dawn for a year and a half. There were like six or seven other ladies in the program and we just became sisters. And um, what I say happened is that the moment that I stepped across the threshold into her home, I became a child of God. <laughs> I became God's daughter. <laughs> And all my sisters there, they didn't treat me like I was a thief or like I was gay. They treated me like I was a princess. They treated me like I was of royal blood with royalty. They treated me like I had never done anything wrong because they had been there longer than me. They could see, they saw gold in me where other people saw a convicted felon or somebody who weighed 100 pounds who had picked her face to pieces you know what I'm saying? Um, they didn't see any of that. And the moment I stepped over, I stepped into my new creation identity. I did. And every old thing was wiped away. Everything old was wiped away. And for a year and a half, I sat under her in her ministry, and she taught me how to live in my new creation life. She taught me how to live as a daughter. And um, we would do encounter times with the Lord. We would just Get in the mornings, we would just get up and soak. We called it soaking. And we would put on music like this for about 30 minutes. And we would just all get our coffee together and close our eyes. And we would just allow the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, of Jesus Christ, to just permeate the whole atmosphere and to permeate us from the inside out. And that's what changed my life. Um, I had a vision. Um, I, you know, I have a really vivid imagination. <laughs> and so I had a, like a vision um, one day that I was standing at the end of an aisle and I was in a complete bridal, like bridal gown. And Jesus Christ was standing at the end of the aisle, at the aisle. And when I looked at him in the eyes and I felt his love for me, I knew instantly that I wasn't gay anymore. <laughs> you know, it's like, <sighs> And I didn't go down there. I went down there for drug addiction. I was like, well, I, I'm okay with the gay part. You know, I just get me off the drugs. Little did I know that when I met my Lord and Savior, my true love, that he would melt my heart to pieces and that he would heal every single thing inside me that was remotely broken, you know? And so I would experience in the visions and in the encounters that we were having, I was experiencing like major wholeness right? Like wholeness from the inside out. And I still do. Um, I still have times with the Lord where I just um, soak in his presence. Um, but it's a little bit different now because he's inside of me. You know, he's inside of you. When I look out here into the audience, I don't see, um, I don't see color. I honestly don't even see gender. I see Jesus Christ on the inside of you. I see Christ inside of you, the hope of glory. I don't see anything else. I don't see if you're a felon. I don't see what your issues are. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just don't see labels anymore. And even in, in um, I think it's Galatians, Paul said, now, because I know Christ Jesus, I know no man according to the flesh. Like, I refuse to um, come down to this earthly level of thinking anymore. Because I'm co-seated with Christ, because I've, I've seated in heavenly places, I've relocated myself mentally, I'm inside of Christ Jesus, I can no longer see anything earthbound anymore. I see it all from heaven's perspective. You know, and when Jesus Christ looks at you, he does not see one blemish because he already paid for it. <laughs> he sees us spotless. Like, if he already paid for it all, why would he say, oh, yeah, I remember that that's, oh, yeah, that's her. You know? So um, the marvelous things that I'm discovering inside of the Word of God is amazing. And I feel like um, sometimes when I read the Word of God, it's like I'm hearing the gospel for the very first time again. And I literally, um, on my couch, just be like, woo, like, that is so good, man, that is so good. I never heard that before. Um, so I love the word of God and that's part of the program that was at Dawn's house was we would we were centered around the word of God and the presence of, of Jesus Christ, the man Jesus Christ, right? Um, so I was down there for about a year and a half. Then I moved back to Birmingham and the Lord started opening up doors for me to go into the jails. And so now I'm going into a couple of the jails that I used to go back that I was in. 
and one of them is Shelby County Jail. And um, this past Sunday, or this past Saturday, my mom and my sister both went to the training with us. And now my mom and my sister are gonna be coming into the very jail that I was in t like 10 years ago. And um, I can't wait, I can't wait for that. You know, there's something about being um, back in the cell block that I was in and me saying, that's my bunk bed over there. And then it's like the women just start listening. They, they, I'm one of them. I'm like, I'm one of you guys. I don't see you sitting here in orange. I see Jesus Christ inside of you and he's paid for everything that you've done, you know? And so to be able to go in there with my mom and my sister to show that not only, um, did he set me free, but he's restoring every single relationship in my life. Like, my goodness, what a testimony. I remember being in there and I, I would use the phone in there to try to call them and um, they would take my phone calls, but they there was like our relationship, I was desperate. I'm in jail, you know? And our relationship was probably nothing. Like we hardly talked unless I was in trouble, right? And so now to be able to go back in with my mom and my sister, who's my best friend, and really, I mean, my dad, me and my dad and me and my mom, we all communicate like we're, we like each other. <laughs> and it's not because I need something. I mean, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy all in itself. So to see the restoring, you know, the healing work of God in our relationships is, is mind blowing to me. And then um, Dawn also offered like a Bible college while we were down there. So I started doing Bible college and I ended up y'all getting my PhD. I got my PhD in theology and um, I wrote a whole book about it. I had to do a dissertation. So I studied the woman at the well for two years and um, it was amazing. It was life changing studying John chapter four for two years and hearing about her story because guess what? She's like one of us, you know, and really it all came back to an identity issue with her, just like it does with us. You know, we've gotten, I guess, ensnared, right, by these little things in the world that have tried to vie for our attention away from our father's eyes. And they've actually ended up trying to define us, just like with the woman at the well. You know, marriage tried to define her. Right? Jesus said, where's your husband? Go get your husband. And she said, I don't have one. And he said, basically, yeah, because you've been trying to define yourself by men and by marriage. And you'll never have to be defined by anything external again. Would you like some living water? And let this become a rushing river inside of you. Right? And that's what it's all about. It's about living water. Um, he, he is so jealous for us. He does not want anything to else to define us except for his our identity, his son, yep. So even though I have a PhD, my greatest title is daughter. I am a daughter and I call my father, my heavenly father, Papa and Dada, I'll say, Dada, hold me, Dada, I need you, just hold me. You know, I went through something really painful last year um, with relationships and um, I remember just laying in my bed and the only thing I could really say I didn't have all the prayers for it. Even the scripture counted all joy when you go through all these trials. And I was like, I'm not joyful, man. This sucks. And I would just say, hold me, Dada. I stopped speaking Christianese. I got to know him. I stopped coming up with your the regular verses, you know? And um, when I went to him, he didn't give me a verse and walk away. He held me. <laughs> and he held me so close. It changed my life. And I would feel the Heavenly Father kiss me on the top of the head right here. And he would say, I'm so glad you're here. Your pain doesn't scare me. I paid for that too. And he would say, it's okay if you're offended right now. I paid for that too. Bitterness. I've got you. And sitting there in his lap, all that stuff went away. <laughs> he turned my bitterness into these beautiful blossoms. <laughs> he turned my pain into love, you know, and he turned my offense into forgiveness. <laughs> and I didn't have to beg for it. And I didn't have a verse to say, you know, 
I mean, I had verses, but they didn't make sense to me when I really was hurting. But you know what made sense? Hugs and kisses from Dada. And I feel like that's what grace is to me. It's hugs and kisses. It's, um, I feel him sometimes just blowing across the top of my forehead right here. And he'll say, yeah, I see your sweaty, sweaty brow. You've just been working a little too hard. <laughs> you don't have to try. I love you. You don't have to strive for my love or earn it. I love you no matter what. There's nothing you could do that would make me not love you. <laughs> you know? And just sitting there with him, I feel like I've really gotten to know him. We bonded. <laughs> I bonded with Jesus. You know? And it wasn't really like a how-to program. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just in pain. <laughs> I was just struggling, man. I was just hurting. And I just went and said, hold me, help me. I don't know what I'm doing. The verses aren't working for me. Like, I'm going to church. I'm in a small group and none of it is working, Lord. <laughs> and he just said, shh, shh, hush, hush. I'm here now. I've got you. I've got it all worked out. I've got a great plan for you. You're going to love what's next. Your, your future is so bright. you got to wear shades. You really do. It's going to be so good. The life that I have prepared for you is so good. Beyond your wildest dreams, your greatest imaginations. So um, I keep writing books. I just keep writing books, tell, telling about the Lord. And so this last book that I wrote is called The Year I Learned to Fly. And I just wrote it. Um, I just wrote it like about... I wrote, what's up? Nothing. Uh, wrap it up. I wrote this like back in October. And um, can you hand me one of those tissues right there, please? Did I bring them up here? Mm, I don't know. Let's see them. No tissue here. Oh, here you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I just wrote this back in October. And really, I started going through my journal of the time that I went through that I had a really, I was so confused in um, these relationships that I had with people in the church. Honestly, I was so confused about it um, that I would just go home and cry out to the Lord and say, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I don't know who I am anymore. I think I'm trying to be something in the church that I'm not. It's, it wasn't comfortable to me anymore. And, um, you know, come to find out there's so much in our subconscious that we do that we don't know that we're doing. And I think I was trying to make up for lost time to be good. You know, like I had been bad for so long, like, 43 years of my life and now that I was like um, set free I was like well I'm just going to be so good that nobody will even say anything else to me and then just being good just didn't I was finding no fulfillment anymore and where I found the fulfillment was sitting in the father's lap and if you want a verse for that, it's we are co-seated in heavenly places, right? We are we are raised in heavenly places, co-seated with Christ. I think it's Ephesians 2. And it's true. And so we relocate ourselves mentally, you know? It's amazing. And then I would just hang out there in heaven and just sit with the Lord and let him level on me. And um, that's the key to my whole life, honestly. I wanted to read um, one of these. Do y'all want to hear one? Yes. Okay, so this is, it's called, like I said, the year I learned to fly, meaning um, I would fly, I consider it like I would start feeling, instead of being so down and pushed down, um, when I thought about living in the lap of the Father in heavenly places, I would feel myself ascending. I, I would feel like I, in my imagination, I would feel like I was flying and I felt free. Do you know what I mean? Like I felt like I was free because I was inside Christ Jesus. He's the one who had placed me in his father's arms anyway, you know? So um, this one is called Love's Acceptance. Her heart settled securely, knowing all is well and all shall be well. Her flesh snugly nests in his hope and his vibrant beauty has gotten inside her. And he whispers as he holds her close to his chest, if they don't want you, I do. If they don't want you, I do. <laughs> Can y'all believe that? 
You know, if you ever struggle with rejection, hear this. If they don't want you, I do. And she lives from love's acceptance. She lives in the light of his love and love shines from her bones. She is love's daughter. She belongs exclusively to love. Love insists on her presence, not demanding her to come, only longing with love. She sees with love's eyes, nothing matters when he is near. She articulates the love story of Jesus, not wanting any to perish. And isn't he amazing, y'all? That's what love does. Love does not demand my presence. He longs for it. <laughs> like, who does this? This is too good to be true. The same God that created the world and the universe wants me to sit right next to him. In fact, he's gone ahead and prepared a place for me. And I'm like, well, I would love to be there too then, you know? And I think sometimes I look back on it and I say, man, I wish I would have gotten there sooner, but then I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so to see the beauty, the beauty of God and in, in our story, and every time I look back at my story, I see that he has never not held me. Like when I look back now, even when I was in all the county jails, even when I was doing my thing, even when I didn't have my identity and I didn't know who I was, that I, when I look back, he held me through it all. You know, and so that's what this is about. It's about identity and it's about, um, I call it like being inside of Christ Jesus. It's living from, a, from inside out. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to, uh, I'll show you a little, this is kind of an example of what it's like to be in Christ Jesus. Have y'all ever seen these little things? So th to me, this is a great picture of what it's like to be in Christ, right? So if you could picture this is you, you know, he's inside of you, just like you are inside of him. So if this is you, here he is. And then because there's three of them, there, he's the three in one, right? Mm -hmm. There's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here he goes, Holy Spirit. Or it could be the other way around. It could be. The big one be the father. You know, it's so much fun to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then here goes another one. <laughs> We're in Christ Jesus. He is not a distant God. He's not an external God that we um, have to beg things for. He is actually inside of us. It's a, He is a more internal, I would say, than external. And so, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, but uh, have you got faith for that? Or are you thankful enough today? And I found that having Christ Jesus in living inside of me, that if I didn't have enough faith or if I wasn't thankful enough that day, I would just say, are you thankful? And he would say, yeah, I'm always thankful. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I am too. <laughs> or I, I would say, um, do I have enough? For this guy for healing and he I'd say do you have enough faith to pray for him to be healed and he'd say yeah let's heal him I would say okay let's go for it you know it's like I made him um I had to make him more real to me and then I found this to be true in the scripture you know so it's astounding okay so let me give out I love to um give out little trinkets, I hide stuff all over Birmingham. Um, and so I'd like to give everyone a little dove. Mandy, will you help me pass these out real quick? Oh, sure. Okay, so these are little doves. And remember what happened with the dove. So remember when the beloved, John the beloved, baptized Jesus Christ, right? Um, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended down like a dove. And right when the Holy Spirit landed on Jesus Christ, the Father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So I'm passing out little doves for you so that you'll remember to live in the well-pleased opinion of your father and to remember you are a son. Even if you're a woman, you're a son. 
and son is your main title because as a son, I know that um, for my father, I am so precious to my father that he would do anything to protect me, wouldn't you? I'm so precious to my father that he took care of me as when I was growing up, my preciousness to him was grounds for my very provision. Yep. Right? Amen. And so the dove represents your preciousness. Do you need some more, man? Yeah. Okay. And then I have one more um, little trinket that I, oh, when I hide these around Birmingham. Oh, my bad. Um, when I hide stuff around Birmingham, one day I took a picture of it and showed it like on Facebook or something. And my dad said, you know what that is, don't you? And I said, what? And he said, littering. <laughs> and I said, well, one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> But, you know, I wrote the story of the woman at the well, and I spent a lot of time at the well, and I realized that the well is always open. Drinks are on the house. You take one drink and you bubble up, living water comes forth. And I wanted to give this to you, Dina. It's a little tiny well, um, and I, like, you know, you have drank, and now you have become a well, and other people are drinking from you. Amen. You are pouring out. Yeah. Yeah, and your testimony is powerful, and I just love you. Thank you so much. Yep, it's the well of living water. You know, it, it, you can feel it just bubbling up and pouring out, can't you? And all of y'all, really, like, since I got here, like, I haven't been able to stop smiling. Everybody here is so friendly. You guys are all heavy drinkers. <laughs> 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 All right, should I wrap us up? Should I close us up in prayer? Okay, and I've got some other, um, I've got some books here for uh, sale, and I have a couple of these shirts also, but I'll just wrap us up in prayer. Father, we just, we adore you, Lord, and more than that, you adore us, and we say that you are adorable, <laughs> and we just love you. Thank you so much for what you've done in my life, and thank you for what you're, you continue to do in all of our lives, God, and I thank you that um, everyone here will know your well-pleased opinion of them, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.